All right, in this video, I want to go over um, using Active Directory users and computers to manage our AD environment. Um, you'll find Active Directory users and computers on any domain controller under Administrative Tools in the Control Panel. You could also install it on your um, Windows clients as well, but we're not going to get into that. So when you open it up, we have our basic view. This is our domain. Here's our organizational units. You'll notice some things are a little different. Like we're used to organizational units. Um, this computer's container is really not an OU. You notice the icon looks a little bit different. It's it's a folder. So in an LDAP query, it would actually be CN equals and not OU equals. So that that is not an OU object. The OU objects have a little bit different icon. You can see like here. So now with these organizational units this is where we'll um, group our um, users and groups and computers normally in an AD environment you want to base your organizational unit structure the number one thing would be group policy how you want to apply group policies the number two maybe for delegation of administration so I could delegate rights at different OU levels and say you know if, if I have a delegated um, help desk or help or technical staff. So normally it would be by OU, th the main reasoning for the OU structure would be for group policy um, application. So we would segregate different types of users, different types of machines, etc. So this is our basic view and I just want to go over some small features. Um, number one, probably the most annoying thing that you'll you'll notice is when you create a new OU um, by default this is checked and you'll find this out and you may pull your hair out trying to figure out how to delete the object especially if you're just testing something and I hit OK on this and create that and I'm like now I cannot delete that because we had that checkbox so to fix that we're just gonna um, go to view advanced features and whenever we're viewing in advanced features, if I go to properties on one of those protected OUs, you can now uncheck that. And then I can now easily go and delete this. So now while I'm in advanced view, which I normally don't stay in all the time because it just shows me a lot more information, but I can see extra stuff on my users and groups. Like I can be able to go and actually look at all the attributes on a user object which is helpful especially if I'm trying to script something or I want to know what what the actual attribute names are and whatnot um, plus I have the option of looking at the object so if I was doing a search and I just found a user and I wanted to know where well what OU is that user in I would be able to click the object and then see exactly what OU is in if I found the, if I found the user in a search so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to take myself out of advanced features view. Um, one of the things I like to do is sometimes I, when I pull up an OU, I, I want to know, especially when I do a lot of syncing from eDirectory and stuff, I want to know how many objects or, or users are in an OU. So I like to go into view it, um, under customize and show the description bar. When I do that, it puts this little bar up here and it shows it will give me a count of all the objects that are in there. Here we also have the option to do filtering. Um, sometimes you'll get caught by this because somebody ahead of you will go in and set a filter and then you don't know it and then you come in and there's a filter set and you're wondering where all your computers are or where your groups are. And it's because somebody filtered them out. So if I click this filter, by default it's showing all objects. Also by default in, in Active Directory users and computers, it will only show 2,000 objects by default at a time. So if I had 3,000 users in an OU and I opened it up, I would only see 2,000 of them. Um, and that is the default that's in here. So if you ever have more than that in an OU, that's not a problem. It just may kind of scare you a little bit as you go in there and look and wonder why you're only seeing 2,000 and there should be 4,500. Um, but to make that a little easier, say I wanted to just go and look at all my users then I would click the filter 
and say show only I only want to see users now so now that that's turned now my filters turned on I go back down here to test and I'm only going to see user objects so you can do the same thing I uncheck users and I'll just say let me see only the groups go back down here to test and now you can see I only see groups you're always going to see OUs just because they're in the they're an organizational structure but now all my all my um, computers and uh, users are filtered out and all I'm seeing is groups that will show up here so that's kinda how and you, you can see up here also with this description bar lets me know that I have a filter activated which is also helpful so you when you get in here and you're like where's my users at I can see right there because I have the description bar on that my filters activated um, so that's just a little bit on filters I want to go ahead and show all types of objects so now I'm seeing my users and groups um, another thing we can do in here um, is search for objects um, a lot of times we'll you know you don't know where an account is but if I go to the top of the tree and I can click the search bar and I can search for computers printers organizational units custom shirts I mean normally I'm just going normally I'm looking for a user so in here I can basically put the username or um, or even the full name if I had it so there it found me right there um, or like if I did Mark Sullivan it found me on that too so and this is what I was talking about earlier now if you found somebody through a search and, and you didn't know um, now I want to know what OU they were in it's kinda of hard to tell from here because nothing really tells me that unless I was in the advanced view and I would have that object button then I could be able to actually if I was in advanced view I could click the object tab and it would show me what OU I was in so to show you how that works um, I go back to view advanced features and now do that same search find M Sullivan there he is okay what OU is this guy in I go to properties I click on my object and I see he's under integrity users Mark Sullivan so that's helpful so there's a search I'm gonna turn back off advanced features um, the next feature that I think is um really handy is the queries I mean these are set up on a per profile basis so as, as you're if you log down as administrator and set up queries and then log back in as yourself you wouldn't have them so just know that I'm just gonna say new query I'll call it a test and the first thing I do is where do I want to start my query uh, maybe I don't want to start all the way at the top maybe I want to just start at the OU where I know where everything that I have is at so we're gonna set the root of where we're gonna search we're gonna say include subcontainers and then we'll define a query um, here's some common queries um, you can search by name starts with ends with has value um, same thing with computers and groups um, you can search for just out of the box here just I want to search say maybe all disabled accounts now I can say let me show me all users um, that have non expiring passwords so so these are some basic canned queries that you can do sometimes I want to know and based upon certain things like I'll go ahead and do custom search here I can say show me all users and pull in any attribute on the users so if I wanted to know all users like for instance with a description like if say I if I set a description on all my teachers or something with teacher or something common or maybe a building in the description that was all common then I can basically say um, starts with and uh, put asterisk like say test asterisk and this will show me anybody that has test in their description and now filter and there's two users that I got sitting down here in test and you see they have the description of test so queries can come in very handy there's many things you can do with them and, and it makes it very helpful to quickly find users and group them and, and, and to do multiple things to them whatever it might be I wanted to go you can actually go in and set a home directory on a user and when you do that 
it will not only um, create the home directory and, and put the appropriate rights, but it will also, by default, just it will map the drive, whatever drive letter, whenever this person logs in. So like I say, I would connect H2, and I would give it a path. Hit apply. Okay. What that did was automatically create my home folder. And when it did that, it set the appropriate permissions for the user to have control of his home folder. Um, I'll delete that and I'll also let you know that you can also do that on multiple objects at the same time. So if I had a whole group of users that I needed to create home directories for, I could select them all, go to properties, and these are the different options that you could set on a multiple level. Like again, remember we talked about querying for description? If I I could go set a mass description for like certain users of a certain type or something that I could key a query off of that would help me. Um, but if I go to the profile tab and click this and say connect H to username percent, I could have a hundred students selected here and hit OK on that, and that would go through and actually create every one of them with the appropriate permissions. And even without a login script it would map the H drive when these users logged on to their home directory. So this is very handy to manipulate the home directories. Really that's it. All I have on Active Directory users in computers. You can see there's a I mean I probably only scratched the surface on the features that you can do in this tool um, but just the queries and the searches and the filtering make it very handy to manage the environment.